Hi, everyone. My name is Nick Russo. You probably remember me from some of the Network Collective podcasts, the public ones that we've done over the past year or so. This is a video series on a topic that's near and dear to my heart, which is trying to determine if a solution or a technology is complex. Now, this is a thing that gets thrown out there a lot. We hear kind of pundits almost talking about this is too complicated. You can't do it. It's used in vendor FUD. It's all over the place, this term. Most of the time, it's really just a person either, one, something they don't know, therefore it's complex, or two, it's something they don't want to learn, and they label it as complex as being something that they just don't want to touch for whatever reason. These are both really bad definitions, and I'll admit that I've even used these cop-outs in my professional career many moons ago before I learned about a better way. The question is, is there a way to objectively measure this or at least try to put some sense or a model around how we would even go about assessing this so that we can provide some kind of thought process for trying to determine whether a solution is complex or not? It's a difficult topic. And you'll notice that uh, I have a, a big fan of Russ White, of course, I'm doing business with him. But even more than that is he's done a video on Network Collective, which is free that I would suggest everyone watch before watching this deep dive series, because in that video, what we're going to see is he helps describe the three main components of his model, which we're going to briefly cover in this first video. The follow on videos in this series are going to dis discuss in detail state optimization and surface interactions, as well as look at some real demonstrations that I've done in some of my public white papers uh, using complexity assessments. So let's jump right in. Let's review what the SOS model is. And I like to think about this in, in a kind of a simplified way of we have three components, state, optimization, and surface. State and st state and surface, when we kind of think of them broadly, they, are, they almost have a negative connotation. That is to say, a network that has lots of state, an MPLS uh, ISP network that has a lot of TE tunnels, a network that doesn't have any route aggregation. Taken out of context, those themes are all kind of generally bad things, things that we want to reduce. Likewise, uh, surface interactions, and again, I realize I'm jumping around a bit. There's an assumption that you have an idea of what these terms mean. Surface interactions is also has kind of a negative connotation where we're talking about tight integration between different components, a lot of, uh, we'll call it fate sharing at a protocol or a technology level. And we'll get into a lot of detailed examples on that. Optimization has kind of a positive context. Optimizing something makes it better. But it's easier to look at the model, in my view, as all three being negative. So I'm just gonna negate the word optimization to mean de-optimization. So if we look at it this way, all three of the components have negative connotation. That means that we want to reduce these negatives. We want to reduce state. We want to reduce de-optimization, which effectively means increase optimization. And we want to decrease surface. Now, the reason that I, I'm spending time to explain this is I will be talking about decreasing de-optimization a lot. Uh, and then I'll verbally just remind everyone that means we're going to increase the optimization. It makes it a lot easier to graphically draw this model and explain some examples. And in general, uh, when we want to reduce one, we either have to increase one or both of the others, depending on the design. And we're going to see a lot of examples of how this actually plays out. Let's examine some of the, uh, I'll call it the trade space. Now you look at this triangle, I draw this a little bit differently than Russ. So again, now I'm not right, he's not right. It's just a different perspective. And the reason I like this perspective is number one, you can draw a dot anywhere in that triangle and it's going to tell you whether your solution is high or low in different categories. But let me explain how this works. So I didn't draw the words near the corners of the triangle, I drew them around the sides. The reason I did that is because by putting it in the corner, when you draw a dot in the corner, it almost makes it seem like you're only optimizing one point. Typically with the SOS model, you're generally going to be able to optimize, or in the, I shouldn't use the word optimize, I should say you're able to reduce two of the negatives, generally speaking. So by drawing a dot in every corner, as you move closer to a side of the triangle, what my graphic here is showing is that you are reducing the negative. So let's stop talking about it and show an example. This purple dot, is at the top of the triangle. It is close to the line that says state and it's close to the, uh, the line or the edge of the triangle that says surface. So a technology or design or whatever entity fits in this purple area would have low state and low surface interactions 
and a high amount of deoptimization, aka it is not optimized at all. A solution, uh, a word to, and I also try to describe this in one word. And again, you may not agree with my exact word, but I'm going to try to paint the picture for you as we move through more examples. I would call this a lightweight technology or a lightweight solution. There's not a lot of surface interactions. There's not a lot of integration between components. And there's not a lot of state, which means it can be deployed probably pretty quickly and without a major capital investment of hardware or other complex machinery. So I'd call that a lightweight solution. The word lightweight may not imply optimization, and in this case, it's not supposed to. Another example is this blue circle on the bottom right. Low surface interactions, meaning it's nice and decoupled, but at the same time, it has a high amount of optimization, or should I say a low amount of de-optimization if we want to look at the triangle a little more formally, but it has high state. I would call this an optimized design. I know that's not a great word uh, because it's one of the names of the, the sides of the triangle, but it's really the best I could come up with. So if we have low de-optimization, which is high optimized and uh, low state, low surface interactions, but high state, we might have a design that we consider optimized to meet a specific need. And if, and if all, let me just back up. If all this seems a little bit abstract, don't worry. I'm just kind of setting the stage for what we're going to talk about for the next hour or so as we get into greater details. The green circle is in the bottom left corner, so it has low state and low de-optimization. Okay, so what? This might be a design that you consider to be integrated because it has high surface interactions. If the state is low, but the components are tightly coupled in such a way where maybe the state is uh, not duplicated between different components, so for example, in some kind of software application, maybe it's well-coded to where the components are properly integrated and not just tossed together, so I managed to keep my state low by not duplicating memory and other uh, poor programming techniques like that. But I'm also able to achieve a high amount of optimization or a low amount of de-optimization to get a good integrated design. So that might be a word that we use to describe a technology that fits into this part of the triangle. <clears throat> we can also draw tr dots anywhere else in the triangle that we want to. So I'm going to draw a couple more dots and explain what these mean. Suppose we have a design or technology that is only low state and kind of has a medium amount of the other two. So it's not really optimized and it's not super, it's not really bad in either direction. It's kind of middle of the road for the other two. I might call this an aggregated design. So for example, if the state is really low, I'm maybe doing some information sharing uh, in, the net, in the context of networks, maybe I'm doing actual prefix aggregation. The deoptimization might not be too bad. For example, maybe I'm only doing some aggregation and not complete total everywhere. And the surface interactions may be kind of halfway between decoupled and integrated. So maybe I have a few dependencies in the network, but not too many. So when I say low state only, I'm saying that the target here of this design was to really just reduce state. So I might end up with an aggregated design. So as this part of the trade-off, I achieve really low state and the other two are kind of midway between. So I kind of get one plus two halves if you want to think of it that way. The orange circle at the bottom implies very low de-optimization, which is good from a, you know, again, if you're trying to optimize, state and surface are kind of middle of the road. I would call this an effective design. Again, these words are a little bit difficult to come up with, but when I'm talking about an effective design, it's something that doesn't have too much state, not too much surface interaction, again, kind of middle of the road on those two, but it's highly optimized for the traffic flow. So this might be uh, like an MPLS traffic engineering design with a, a core mesh and then maybe regional meshes. So there's some, a little bit of aggregation there to reduce some state. And there are some surface interactions where the tunnels stitch together uh, between the regional and the core networks maybe. But it could still be highly effective for moving traffic around based on what your network looks like. So that's why I call this an effective design. The last one is yellow. I apologize if that's a little hard to see. It's on the right near the surface word. I'm calling this one decoupled because the surface is very low and the state and the optimization are kind of midway between. So the primary focus of a technology or a design in this part of the triangle would be something that is decoupled. So we have lots of components, they don't rely on each other, there aren't very many dependencies, uh, and maybe a result of having so few dependencies means I need extra state to be copied between those components. And maybe it's not a totally optimal design in terms of traffic forwarding because I've decoupled the components so much that the traffic can't flow the right way. Again, I realize that's a really vague example. I have some better ones coming up, but I just wanted to explore this and make sure people understood how you can draw the dot kind of anywhere in the triangle and still have it be an effective design. 
In the next video, we're going to spend about 10 minutes or so talking in detail about state and the speed of state and understand how that works. See you next time.